Well, Stargate Origins is finally here, so here's a review of episodes 1 through 3. Caution, this video will contain spoilers. If you have not seen the episodes and you do not want spoilers, do not watch this video until after you have seen those three episodes. Coming up right after this. Hey everybody, I'm Taylor and I'm the Stargate Guy, where I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. Today we're talking about the brand new Stargate Origins. Stargate Origins just premiered a few days ago with episodes 1 through 3. Now let me just say first off that episodes 1 through 3 are actually starting to surprise me. The storyline is not really what I thought it would be, which is kind of nice to see. We do realize that the Nazi SS, which went after a lot of different relics, also went after the Stargate led by this wonderfully scarred fellow, believing that it is a doorway to the gods. And he wanted to go to the gods and try to get some of their power for the Fuhrer. And that is where the Langfords came in. Based off of his intelligence about the Stargate that he has gathered around the world, he finally meets the device and they dial it up to Abydos. And that is where they go through the gate with Professor Langford in order to find these gods. Now they do actually find one. It's not Ra, but it's one of his middle managers. So far we know that this Gua'uld is unlike any that we have seen before. Primarily because this Gua'uld has an entirely different approach to ruling us humans. And that seems to be a very nurturing approach. In fact, the first time that we even see this character, she is holding a baby and comforting it and then passing it off to someone else before killing a guy. I don't know about you, but I personally could not see Anubis coddling a small child. That, that's a weird picture. Now, a couple of things that people have complained about. One, the Stargate opening with the small amount of power generated from a diesel generator and a vehicle. To that, I respond the first time, the Stargate stores enough energy so that you can have one cold dial sequence in it without it being hooked up to any sort of electricity. That was proven in the Stargate 1 episode Nemesis, I believe was the title. As far as it opening the second time with Catherine and Wazif and Captain whatever his name is going through the gate and just using the same generator and the one vehicle, I say... I don't know, you got me there. That's a big inconsistency with the episode 1969. Yes, in the episode 1969, they had enough power in it to make one cold dial, but they also used several different vehicles in order to power the Stargate to make that a stable wormhole. For those of you thinking that this series will be completely in line with the rest of Stargate, meaning Stargate SG-1, Atlantis, and Universe, well, you're wrong. In fact, it is more closely in line with the actual Stargate movie than it is with the rest of the series, even though the rest of the series has way more stuff in it. Therefore, the Stargate is going to look like the Stargate in the movie, not in the series. The wormhole is going to look like the wormhole from the movie, not the series. This is due to a couple of things. One, the people actually making this probably did not want to sit down and watch every single episode of Stargate, even though we totally have at least once, multiple times for a lot of people. But rather watching one movie is a lot closer to tie a miniseries to. Also, you gotta remember that this show is operating under a rather small budget. It did not have the giant budget that SG-1 Atlantis and Universe did. You gotta remember that those series had a big budget. The headquarters of the SGC was an actual like giant freaking set all tied together that was super crazy tall and big. This one it takes place in a warehouse because it saves money. And these sets are going to not look as good because they're trying to save money. The actors, some of them are discount actors and a lot of things are because they don't have a lot of money. This is a small web series, people. It is not a giant reboot of Stargate that we all hope and pray will happen one day. This is MGM sitting their toe in the water to see whether or not a actual Stargate reboot is going to be worth their time, i.e. their money. When it comes to this series, open your mind and give it a chance. It is not going to be the Stargate that we all know and love. And no matter how many videos we can make about it, we're not going to have that exact same thing back. We can't. It's impossible. But we can have newer renditions of it in the future. But that will depend on how we as an audience 
react to Stargate Origins. The fate of the franchise is figuratively and kind of literally in our hands. Depending on how we react to Stargate Origins, that is going to determine whether or not MGM is going to spend the money to make another Stargate series full on or to make another movie. They need to know it's going to be profitable and it's going to be well received by us because we're the ones that are eventually going to pay for it. Another great frustration of the fans is that as soon as you start getting into the story, it cuts you off, you're done, you need to wait for the next episode. As soon as we really get into it, we immediately have to pull out of it again because the episodes are so freaking short. This is kind of a good thing for us to tell MGM, for us to tell the creators of the show. Yes, we like the story enough that we don't want it to end after 10 minutes of filming. We don't want it to end after 8 minutes of filming. We want to see more. Now, this series was designed to be binge-watched and will probably be combined into one movie type thing so that we can watch all of them and only have to go through the credits once and not 10 times over again. As far as the actual acting and the creation of this itself, yes, it looks a little cheesier, it looks a little low budget because it is low budget, period. Some of the things that are really good about this series so far is Connor Trenner and Ellie Gal. You two are doing an amazing freaking job and I believe your characters, which is the highest praise that I can give to an actor. You guys actually make me believe that these characters are real. That's your goal and you're doing it so far. Connor, I know this is a new thing for you, being dressed like an old guy, but you know what? It's believable. You are really doing well on that character. Thank you so much for portraying him. Ellie's doing a great job embodying this character. This character who's a little fearless, this character who is loyal to her father, this character who has a boundless curiosity, and also one who is rather impulsive. I can totally see that of Katherine Langford. As far as the other actors go, the believability of their performance kind of varies so far. As far as the Nazis go, I don't really buy it, especially that one SS guy who has a uniform that's one size too large, and the comedy that the Nazis bring to the table. That's not what I wanted out of Nazis. As far as the actual filmography of it, a lot of it is very good. There's a couple things that I would love to give a note to Mercedes about. The uh, end twist thing that you did with the camera at the end of the first episode, that was really disorienting and it just looked really bad. The, you had a couple of very beautiful, beautiful shots from the event horizon looking out. Beautiful shot of Ellie putting her face through the event horizon. Beautiful shot. As far as transitioning from one scene to another, it's hit and miss. The circling of the camera, way too much. The transition from one teeny scene to another, it does not need to be over the top. If we recognize it's a transition, it's not a good transition. But what do I know? I do jump cuts in this YouTube video. But I'm making a YouTube video. <laughs> Overall, guys, remember Stargate Origins is not the Stargate we know and love. This is a new rendition of Stargate. And depending on how we accept this Stargate determines if we're going to have more awesome Stargate in the future. So even if you have your reservations, even if you don't really like it all that much, for the sake of the franchise, for the sake of all of us, for the sake of MGM making money with this deal and wanting to do it, shut up. Don't, don't go out there and bash the series a lot. Because if you do, they will stop Stargate altogether and we're all sunk. The franchise is hanging in the balance of how us, the fans, react to this. If we make it so that MGM wants to continue with the franchise, they will. If they see a profit in it, they will do it. And that depends on us. Let me know what you guys think about Stargate Origins episode 1 through 3 in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. Great videos are coming out every week where I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. You can click right here for an awesome video about Stargate Origins, or you can click right here for some more Stargate action. And until next time, I'll see you on the other side.